You seriously forgot the tickets now. I'm sorry. Oh, well, I've got a plan. Oh, ow. Let's go, we can go anywhere with this. Come on down here. Show me how this works. There's probably a lot of technology. Oh yeah. I guess it's so simple. It's so part about Mind you, I've probably been doing it so long, I think it's Yeah, this is where we hang out. We have filter tanks for our water. So when we cut, we use special water. And come on over here and have a look. So we monitor temperatures all over the ice. Right? This is all in Fahrenheit. You probably don't understand that. Like that's down on the ice. That's the slab and that's the surface of the ice. And the same thing here, we got our air temperature, how much humidity, the dew point, we won't explain that one. Okay, so that's how we do that. And we monitor our compressors and turn our compressor on and off accordingly to keep the, the temperature the proper, proper spot. So this is our little station. How long does it take that to make the ice to convert it? So we started uh, basically on a Sunday night. I think Sunday night. And, and we had it ready to curl by Wednesday. So about three days, four days. And we built right on top of the hockey ice, eh? So they're like underneath our ice, when they shave their Zamboni, all that ice off, they'll go right back to their hockey ice. So there's probably about that much ice out there. A couple of inches of ice or an inch and a half, inch and, well, there's probably a couple of inches. How do they pebble it? How do we pebble? You know what pebble's for? Why do we pebble? Yeah, I, I don't know. So a curling stone actually only runs on a, a very small uh, piece of the granite because it's it's concave, right? It's shaped. So the pebble allows the rock to glide, it gives it the speed, so it'll carry down. If there was, if the rock was flat or the ice was flat, there'd be so much uh, friction that the rock wouldn't go anywhere. So that's why we pebble. So, we do a couple of pebbles. Geez, maybe uh, Ian would like to explain explain the rock handles to you. You said you curled a little bit? Yeah. So if you go to a curling club, the handle looks kind of like this, right? It's pretty plain looking. It's got a bolt that holds it onto the rock. The rock has a hole right through the middle of it. But these handles look a little different, right? So these are the ones that are on here. 
and they got a system called the eye on the hog. So, if, so because you're you're supposed to let go of the rock before you get to the hog line. So if you go over the hog line and you're still hanging on to it, the rock is dead. It's no longer in play. So this one is a little different, eh? Yeah. Got some fancy stuff on it. So, so, so when you uh, when a curler, one of the last thing they do while they're getting ready to throw the rock is they clean the bottom of it. So they flip the rock up to clean it, right? And that sets the switch. So that means it's ready to go. So then they grab the handle and they hold on. And if they slide out to the hog line, we buried these magnets in the ice. There's, they're about four feet long and they're right across. And if you're holding on and you go over that magnet, the red light flashes and says, that rock's hogged, okay? And if I'm not, so then, a good question was asked the other day, well, how does it not trip on the magnet at the other end when it's going that way? Is it tight? It has a timer built in. So after so many seconds, before it gets to the far end of the ice, it'll shut itself off. See? And then I want to reset it. Okay, and you're going to do me a favor and you're going to hold on to that magnet and I'm going to set this and I'm going to let go. Oh, and you get a green light, that means it's good. Pretty cool, eh? Now that we got these media passes, we should do something. We should. Good thing about these. So we're here today with Jennifer Jones, a uh, skip of the wild card. How do you like Moose Jaw? I really, really love Moose Jaw. The people have been amazing. The facility is unbelievable. We're having just the time of our lives here. So thank you for the hospitality. Why is do the skips always have long sleeve uh, like coats instead of the other players? Well, because we don't sweep, so we don't get as hot. So for the most part, we need to we we like to stay a little bit warm, and that's why we have our jackets on all game. But sometimes it's hot enough I take off my coat. Why is it called a skip? You know what? To be honest, I, I think it just goes back a long time ago. The skipper is kind of the leader of a like the captain of a of a boat. Maybe I don't. I'm not actually not even sure, but that's what I'm gonna go with. What's your favorite color stone? Out of like curling. I don't really have a favorite color, but sometimes the rocks react different, so it, I just like the rocks that react the way I want them to react, no matter what color. How do you describe uh, curling to someone who hasn't seen it? It's basically like kind of chess on ice, uh, a little bit of, you just got to get closest to the middle, which people tend to call the bullseye, and um, just try to get as many rocks of your color closer than anybody else's, and that's how you score points. What ga What sports prepared you for curling? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I curled when I was a, a little kid, but I also played every other sport. I played baseball and volleyball and basketball and track. And so I, I don't know, I just love sports of any kind, And but curling was the one that I loved the most. Thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks very much, guys. It was an amazing shot to win the game. Well, we are here with uh, the Saskatchewan Skip for the curling team, Robin Silvernagel. There you go. What do you prepare? Bef what do you do to prepare before curling? Uh, we try to get lots of rest um, and eat really well, stay hydrated, and then just do things that keep us loose and calm before the game. Not think about too much of the game. Go out touring, spend time with our family. Why do you think the skip is called skip? I really don't know where the name Skip came from. <laughs> yeah. That's a really great question. Like, I'm going to have to look into that one. Yeah, like, I thought it um, was because you skip all the way to the end. To Maybe, because I have to start at one end and go all the way to the other. Yeah. That's a very good possibility. What other sports prepared you to be a curler? Um, I think playing all sports, actually, as a kid in school, you know, playing sports by yourself and on a team just helps prepare you for, 
for events that you're going to be on a team with later on. How did, uh, how did you decide that you wanted to be a skip? Um, I played third for a long time, and it was actually kind of my mom that convinced me into it. She's like, I think you could skip you'll be wanting to make those last shots. So I tried it and the first year I skipped, I made it to junior nationals and then I just kind of stayed skipping after that. Mm. Yeah. How do you like Moose Jaw? Moose Jaw's awesome. The crowd has been awesome. We've done lots of fun things. It's been a great city. Why do skips wear coats compared to the other players? Well, I guess you could say skips are lazy because they don't do any of the sweeping except the last like six feet if the rock yeah. is heavy. So we are always cold. As a skip, I'm usually cold. And everyone else is working so hard that they get warm yeah. and they have to wear t-shirts and they're usually sweaty yeah. and I'm freezing. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. We're here asking Ian about what they do to the ice. What exactly happens between game times? So after the game, we uh, go out and we uh, we actually scrape the ice. And all we're actually doing is removing the old pebble, and then we're going to put new pebble on for the next game. And then after we finish pebbling, we'll go out there with a different machine, which is basically a power scraper, and we nip the pebble. So all we're doing is cutting the very tops of the pebble off and that gives it the ice its speed and its curl right off the bat. Hmm. Interesting. How much more sheets left do they have? Sorry? How much more sheets left? Two more to scrape. Oh, these two? Uh, these ones here, I think. Decising about what bucket? The snow bucket? Yeah. Well, go look at it. <laughs> I know, it just feels so weird. Cool, yeah. but it like feels like it's Well, it's a little different than the snow that falls yeah. from the sky. If you look here, right, this, we never cut this off, so we cut it, it's bumpy. Put your hand up. Yeah, it's bumpy. It's bumpy, and it come over here where you scream. So we never actually take it right to the base, we just take the pebble off and leave a little tiny piece. See the little outline? Yeah, you can still see the little, yeah, you can see the sticker there. Yeah. But you can't notice that on TV. How do you put the sticker on? Uh, it's just a, it's like a mesh. We just lay it on top of the ice and we put water on top of it. We take a big paint, like a painting roller, and we just flatten it out and force the air out of it. Oh, cool. Cool. And this is painted. The rings are actually painted on top of the ice. Same paint they use for the red lines and the blue lines in hockey. Today we're with Vic from TSN. Hi uh, guys, I'm glad. Thanks for asking me. Yeah. So I have a dear question about you. Okay. Are you a cyborg? No, I'm not a cyborg. Sometimes okay. I feel like a cyborg after a long day, but not today. Uh, for... That's okay, they're just playing with the lights. It's all right. For when you uh, prepare for a show on TSN, yes. what do you prepare, like, what do you do to prepare? How do I do it? Well, the internet makes it a lot easier than it used to be. I can find out a lot of information from the internet about the teams and the players, but I tell you, nothing is as good as uh, going down and talking to the players. That's where you really learn something a little different. What's your favorite sport? Well, I love curling, always have. Been involved with it now for uh, some 33 years. But heart, uh, I'm, a, I'm a gearhead. I love auto racing. I love all kinds of auto racing. Have you ever played curling? Yes, and uh, but I've got some bad hips. But uh, no, I can't. Uh, I can't throw it the way I used to. But yeah, I used to play two and three times a week. Oh, what position did you play? Oh, I was always the lead. I was never good enough. Although that's not. But that's not. That's like saying you should put the fat guy in net and make him the goalie. But no, I was always the lead. Uh, well. Anything else, boys? Why did you like being a lead? Well, I mean, it, it was a lead because I didn't play very much, and they sort of made that the position where 
I didn't have to get the rocks in exactly the right position. I didn't have, yeah. I couldn't throw the skip stone. I wasn't that good, right? Yeah. How's Moose Jaw so far? Moose Jaw is great. Nice to be back here. They have some great uh, restaurants. The Deja Vu Cafe. Have you been to the Deja Vu Cafe before? No. They have the best wings and the best milkshakes. You should go. I mean, I've tried the uh, milkshakes because I'm not really yeah, they really are good. It's called the Deja Vu, so it's nice. Yeah, it's nice to be back. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Tom, Bob, my pleasure. Thank you, boys. Really good. Good luck with your channel. That's great. Thanks.